Hi, this is Mary, your holistic recovery coach. Today, I want to talk about what emotions are the most dangerous for us in terms of if left unresolved, they are most likely to lead us to pick up a drink or a drug. Okay, so today we're talking about um, emotional health and relapse prevention. So what two emotions? There, there are two that, I've, that I was always told about um, in early recovery that to, to watch for the most in terms of having the potential to lead us fastest to picking up a drink or a drug. Those two were anger and self-pity. So let's just, uh, let's talk about those two. And uh, I might add a couple more to the list actually. Uh, so just a couple others that we really need to be mindful of and deal with. Um, but anger I think is the most obvious one, um, especially when you first get sober and you no longer have that numbing, coping, running, you know, as unhealthy coping mechanism um, of your active addiction. And so suddenly you'll be feeling all your feelings, perhaps a lot more um, uh, potent, with a lot more potency than before, because um, you can't run from them. They're there and you're gonna feel them. You might find other ways to try to uh, distract or avoid them, um, but generally speaking, no longer uh, engaging in mood altering substances, you're going to basically have to um, encounter these emotions and learn how to deal with them in a, in a healthy manner or else lead back towards, towards using. So again, we'll talk about anger first. That comes up a lot for people. Um, perhaps you were aware of anger when you were in your active addiction um, or perhaps you were someone who you know uh, didn't show a lot of anger, but suddenly, you might get in touch with that emotion now. And when you first put down um, you know, your, drug, your drugs of choice, uh, your substance of choice or substances of choice, um, and you know, putting down drugs and alcohol for the first time, you know, it's, there's a grieving process, um, whether you're conscious of it or not, that's going on because really you're, you're, you're experiencing a perceived loss, even though it's a good loss, it's still a loss. It's still a major change where you're letting go of, um, you know, this uh, this relationship, if you will, to uh, drugs and alcohol that you had for so long. Not only that, but also your relationship to yourself, um, how you see yourself, maybe your identity as someone who who uh, drank or drugged, um, and now you're you're kind of finding your new your new way, your new path, your new identity um, as a sober individual. With any type of grief process, there's those, those stages, uh, there's different feelings uh, that it's not always linear. They don't always come in order, arrive in order. And sometimes you kind of bounce around in them, but anger is one that's pretty common. Um, so chances are you might experience some anger in early recovery. Um, just simply in, in, not simply, but um, just first and foremost, in regards to um, the fact, coming to terms with the fact that you are an alcoholic addict or, um, you know, coming to terms with suddenly you have to uh, deal with things that might upset you and not be able to, you know, fall back on uh, that, that old unhealthy coping mechanism. Um, there's so many reasons why anger can get kicked up. Um, and obviously old stuff that you never dealt with that's still there because you never dealt with it. So there it is, um, you know, kind of uh, right in front of your face now that you're sober perhaps. So the thing about anger is it's dangerous if we react to it while we're, especially while we're in it. Um, why, why that's a dangerous place for us is, you know, with anger, as we, um, as we navigate our recovery process and, um, and learn more about it, um, many people also will point out that usually anger is a response to some fear. Okay. So again, talking about loss, usually fears kind of can generally fall into two broad, broad categories, fear of losing something that you have or had, um, or fear of not getting something that you would like to have that you want. Um, so if you think about fears, you usually fall into one of those categories one, one, way, one way or another. Um, so again, you've just, uh, you've just lost your old coping mechanism, even though it's for a good reason and it's a good thing for you, that can kick up the anger. Um, but so the anger being about really having fear behind it and driving it, and you might not be aware of what the fear is. That's where again, like the um, like 12 step recovery, that type of a process, we have some type of a process where you're working with someone who's helping you um, navigate some um, 
insights about yourself and go through a process of self-discovery where you can identify what's really been kind of driving your behavior and, and thinking um, and what's what's been um, what what's helpful now and what what uh, what you need to let go of or, or work at changing. Um, anger comes up, you know, uh, we talk about uh, resentments in the uh, traditional 12 steps in the fourth step, we do an inventory, that's what, that's part of the inventory. And so certainly anger can come up, right? And uh, anger is involved and we learn that there's usually fear behind that. Now I'm saying all that to explain that when we're in a state of anger, okay, which is a temporary state, um, of course, some you might know some people who seem like they're angry all the time, but they could be kind of stuck in it. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a you know, temporary uh, emotion, emotional state that's in response to some fear. Now, why do we have it in response to fear? Well, because it's actually a more powerful, okay? I want you to think about the concept of, you know, the, ener the energy of, of different states of being, some things kind of being like super powerful or super enlightened, like the highest being like enlightenment, right? Okay, and like the lower ones being um, more challenging energy and that, that doesn't really serve us um, and that you don't want to get stuck in. Well, anger is, relatively low on the scale, but it's not the lowest. Why is that? Well, because there's some, there's some power to anger and um, whether or not it's healthy power, it's, it's when we're in an angry state, you're, you're ticked off, right? You're, and you're, so you've got this like drive to do something about it, right? I mean, maybe you want to go punch something, you know, or maybe you need to go uh, work out or something and do something healthy to get, to move that energy out um, in a, in a safe manner. But the point is that there's emotional energy and it's in this state that's about like feeling powerful because it's it's a response to not to feeling really powerless because because really there's this fear going on below the surface and so you don't want to feel powerless you know your ego or whatever state kind of kicks kicks you into an anger response and the anger response is to feel some like motivation to do something about it you know like um you have that energy to do something um but obviously if we're reacting and not responding from a healthy uh, sober kind of balanced state, then um, the reaction can be not a good one. And um, it could be in terms of drinking, it could be A, that you don't want to feel the anger, that it scares you. And so you want to you want to shut that out. And so you're more likely to reach for a drink or a drug to to try to just get get that anger to stop, to turn off. Um, or it can, can put you into that spite place, right? That I'll show you, I'll hurt me, <laughs> which is right. Yeah, really spite is about hurting yourself um, to, uh, you know, in, in, to react uh, to someone else, to feeling hurt or something. So if you're angry because you're, you have a perceived uh, hurt, you feel hurt about something, um, you might decide to hurt yourself in response, which, you know, that sounds a little crazy even as I say it, right? But it's not rational, um, but it is, uh, it's kind of a, a natural, if you will, reaction um, as an untreated or, you know, um, not fully treated early recovery, kind of a newly recovering alcoholic, let's say, um, who gets, who gets triggered by something and is angry, you know, the response might be to like numb out the anger or drink at the person or situation that you're angry at or about, um, which, you know, of course, isn't going to resolve anything. Um, but uh, those are kind of the old patterns. And so if you haven't developed new patterns or deal or um, dealt with some of this old stuff or learned how to um, navigate your emotional, uh, the emotional roller coaster that ensues, especially in early recovery, yet in a healthy manner, then, you know, you're at risk. Um, and so if you catch yourself being angry, it's also one of the, the big uh, pieces of HALT. Uh, I can link to that video as well. HALT, if, you, you know, if you're feeling off, see what's going on. Are you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Because again, it's very simple. There's simple states that can put us into a, a real vulnerable position for, for picking up. And that, so that's why we're talking about this. So anger is one of the, uh, the biggest ones. Um, to watch for and to do something about. And I'll link to that video because in that video, I get I go into detail about how to address each of those things and halt. And so you could just fast forward to the anger section um, and, uh, and and see how I, what I talk about there in terms of holistically addressing that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll put some resources in the description below this video. Um, so anger, an attempt at feeling more power and, and, it's, and it's false power, just like 
I mean, there's some power in, in, in the energy of anger. You, you know, you might feel powerful. You might get an adrenaline rush. You might, you know, feel like you can do something powerful, um, you know, more powerful than being stuck in fear and feeling like powerless or, you know, just um, hopeless. But, um, but actually it's, it's certainly a dangerous, it's a potentially dangerous state to be in. And so you really need to do something um, healthy to mitigate that so that you don't do the wrong thing and uh, set yourself way back um, on the, in the recovery journey. Um, so there's anger. Okay. And then you got self-pity. Now, remember I was kind of painting a picture of sort of a scale. It's uh, it's actually coming from the concept of um, the research from Dr. David Hawkins, uh, David Hawkins, PhD, who did, who's done a ton of work about and, and, and gives this, and a lot of the framework about it has to do with like this map of consciousness and different emotional states and kind of uh, when we're in a different state, um, what's our, our life perspective and what's our emotional state and where are we coming from and, and, uh, you know, how, how powerful is it, you know, um, or how, how conscious are you? And so, um, again, if you're like an enlightened being, right, like that's the highest, that's like the ideal. It's like as high as you could be in that kind of consciousness scale. And if you're, um, way down low, so I mentioned anchors relatively low, even lower than that um, would be self pity. Um, because self, you know, self self pity is really about like despair and uh, hopelessness. And so, if we're feeling self pity, you're even like in a lower emotional state than anger. You know, you you you're you feel like why bother, right? Um, it, it's not like I'll show you all hurt me, you know, um, or I'm gonna go do something about it. Um, it's like anger can bring. It's more like. Uh, you know, pour me, as we hear, pour me, pour me, pour me a drink. <laughs> um, like, you just feel bad for yourself and it's victim energy, you know? And so you feel like bad things happen to me or something bad just happened to me and poor me and I can't do anything about it. And you just kind of like are in that, again, in that victim energy, which is really low on that scale. And that makes us really vulnerable to drinking as well, because it's like, that's where the efforts come in, right? <laughs> Effort you know, why bother, um, F it and run, um, you know, just say it like, that's when, when you get the, the, the F it, so to speak, it's like, why bother? So what the heck, I might as well go, you know, go back to drinking, you know, and uh, that certainly never solves anything, but um, as we know, but, you know, in, in that self-pity, it's another state that we need to be very uh, watchful for, and again, do something about it. Um, and, and progress up the scale. You're better off in the, in, not better off in the anger phase, but at least in the anger phase, then you're like, you're moving up the, the, uh, the scale, so to speak, but you need to do something to move through, through the anger energy in a healthy manner so you can keep moving forward. Um, and again, I'll put some, I'll put some resources in the video below. One of the tools I talk about a lot is um, emotional freedom technique. And that can be very, it's like a very effective intervention in the moment too. you catch yourself suddenly, you know, you're, you're sitting there at home and starts stewing and brewing over, uh, you know, emotionally over something that you're really upset about. And uh, you can use this tool, a uh, simple kind of mind body tool to, to um, help counter those feelings and process them and shift them and, and get you back in a, in a more calm, uh, clear state um, so that you will make a healthier decision and not pick up. So anger and self-pity, those are the big ones. And those are, that's kind of like, I'm um, just trying to dissect why for you, help explain why that is. Um, it's good to be aware. It's good to be aware of, of um, you know, what the, what the pitfalls are and what, what to watch for and why, right? So I don't know. I'm just someone who likes to know why. If you don't tell, you know, if I don't know why, it's kind of like, you know, just knowing why helps in, in increase your awareness and then you're more likely to um, kind of uh, integrate, I think, the information and the, the concept. So um, that's enough about those. And I just want to add that also on that lower scale where, you know, um, around below anger and somewhere near self-pity is, and, and maybe no lowest on the scale is like shame. You know, you've got shame and you've got guilt and regret. Um, and shame usually also is connected to the, um, the emotion of humiliation. So those are things that you, you know, we really have to watch for, but not, not only that, but you know, like shame isn't something that pops up like anger, right? Well, it, it does, but it's not something that's as obvious sometimes. Sometimes it's a little more subtle. You might not always have a name for it um, when you're feeling it, you might not realize it, 
but it's something and, and guilt certainly is a little more obvious. Um, regret, usually when you're really like thinking of actively thinking about something that happened, that you feel bad about that you wish you could, you know, wouldn't have done. Um, but a lot of those emotions can again, be addressed either in like step work or in a therapeutic process, working with, you know, a coach or a mental health professional of some sort. Um, you know, um, if not like a sponsor or a mentor of some sort that's been through a process like this, that can, you know, it's equipped to help you through it. But, um, you know, shame's a, shame's a big one. And, um, you know, rarely uh, does someone uh, get through any amount of time of active addiction without having some sh sense of shame, um, be surprised. Um, certainly guilt and, and remorse and things like that. So, you know, the process of recovery, the 12-step recovery and other types of programs usually address, um, have some uh, technique, some strategy or process to help address um, those more deep-seated type of emotional states and, and um, emotional energy, like, uh, you know, with shame and guilt and remorse. Because certainly if you stay stuck in those long enough, that's, you're extremely vulnerable for drinking. Um, because again, there's just, they're in those, like, you feel you know, almost like lower than low, you know? Um, so you don't, you're not feeling powerful, uh, you know, a healthy, when I talk about being powerful, I mean, in a healthy regard, um, not the false sense of power, but, you know, um, you're in your natural state of well being. you know, having, having the power, the, the natural given power that we're given um, when we're, when we're healthy and balanced, uh, the power to kind of live our best life, right? Um, so that's what it's all about. Uh, and it begins with, um, you know, obviously putting down the drink or drug, getting on whatever your recovery path is, but staying on that path and um, being aware of what to watch for and uh, learning new ways of coping and strategies for, um, you know, for navigating these different emotions that uh, can be major pitfalls if, if we don't. So I hope, I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any comments, please do um, comment below the video. Uh, again, I'll put more information and you know any resources or links that I, um, or references uh, that I made in the video in the description below the video. So just open up the description for those details, as well as my uh, contact info if you'd like to get in touch. And um, what else? Thank you for liking the video. Please uh, share it with others that you think might find it helpful and um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Thanks so much. And I look forward to our next topic. Have a great 24 hours ahead.